What the function keys and hot buttons? Welcome back to the Inside Track. My name is Phil Coppola, Genetech Security Center product expert and board certified physical security professional. In our last video uh, about the not so hidden features, the, the, the one that I started off with, the number five not so hidden feature was the F1 key, right? So hitting the F1 key brings up the user guide, the built-in user guide for Security Desk and for Config Tools. So if you're looking for something and you're not really sure where to find it, rather than going to the Genetech portal or calling your system integrator or calling Genetech support, you could literally just hit F1 on this keyboard and be brought to the user guide. Incredibly useful feature. And it's something that people, unless they accidentally hit the F1 key, are not necessarily going to, uh, going to do on a routine basis. Which got me thinking. If F1 does something, does F2 do anything? What about F3, F4? In fact, what if there are a bunch of other hotkeys that you can press and do things? And turns out, there are a lot of them. So in this episode, which is a continuation of our Not So Hidden Feature series, we're going to dive into function keys and hot buttons. So stick with me and let's dive in. All right, so here we are in Security Desk, and uh, just as a gentle reminder, again, you can watch the video uh, that we did in the last episode about the top five not-so-hidden features to discover the uh, the number five, uh, or at least what I classified as the number five not-so-hidden feature, the F1 key. So if we hit F1 while we're in Security Desk, it brings up the Security Center User Guide 5.9, because I'm licensed for 5.9. If you have 5.8, the 5.8 version will come up. And so you could find the entire user guide here. And of course, this is a, this is a live document. So it is searchable, of course. Um, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time here. If you want to get more information on this, just hit F1. So that begs to ask the question, well, what happens if we hit F2? Well, let's do that. F2. It brings up a menu to change the task name. So this is really helpful when you start saving individual workspaces and you want to make the tasks, so that's this tab up here. This is the task that I'm in. It's the monitoring task. Maybe I want to call this the command center or the SOC or whatever I want to call it. So let's call it command center. Whoops. Command center. And we hit rename. Well, look, it changed it up here. So if I had multiple tasks running and maybe I wanted to save my workspace, uh, that'll be another not so hidden feature in Genetech Security Center in an upcoming video, but I can right click and hit save workspace. Well, if I had a number of tasks that I want to have pre-opened and renamed for me so I know actually what I'm looking at, I would hit F2 and rename the task. So for some reason, and unless somebody from Genetech can tell me otherwise, F3, F4, and F5 do nothing. I have tried pressing them under a number of circumstances, and, and I haven't found a use for F3, 4, or 5. But F6 does do something. It hides the area view. So if I want to uh, just get some extra screen real estate and hide the area view, all I have to do is hit F6. And obviously, if I hit F6 again, it toggles it back. Now, of course, there's a button down here to hide the area view, and I can click that, and, and it'll do the same thing. But hey, why not have a hotkey for it? F6 hides the area view. So if F6 hides the area view, well, then F7 should hide the control window. So again, if I wanted to open up some extra real estate, depending on how I interact with Security Desk, maybe I don't need those controls. I could just throw that off to the side by hitting F6 or F7. And if I hit F6, I hide the area view. And now look at all this beautiful screen real estate I've made for myself. That brings us to F8. But F8 doesn't do anything. Unless you can find uh, what I'm doing wrong here, please be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you found a function for F8. I haven't found it. But F9 does something interesting. It displays the event log. So if I'm monitoring specific events on cameras, doors, alarm points, or whatever, anything that can 
possibly create an event in Security Desk, I can change the way that those events are displayed. Let me show you what that looks like. So first things first, we need to monitor something. So I'm going to come down here to monitoring. I'm going to add my front door, which is this device right here. Hello. And I'm going to monitor it on tile number two, meaning all the events that happen will always happen on this tile. We can make it so that it, you know, does all the different tiles, but for these purposes, we'll just monitor in tile two. And so now if I swipe a card, let's pick a card here. So you see these four dots here? Traditionally, we could just drag this down and uh, we can even hide this 100% and we can see all the events as they're coming in. So here's Pam and here's Hank swiping their card and gaining access. We could even leave it up just like this. And then if we wanted to, we can click and drag these events in here for, for viewing, uh, for forensic searches. Uh, or what our F9 key shows us is we can hit F9 and without having to touch those four dots, it just brings us right to this uh, right to this screen. Or if we hit F9 again, it lays it out for us perfectly. Or if we hit F9 again, it gets rid of it. So uh, F9 displays the event log, which brings us now to F10. Now F10 hides all <laughs> everything. But it doesn't quite take us to full screen, so it still leaves the task bar at the bottom. So if I hit F10 now, you can see we lose the the area view, we lose the controls, and we lose the top uh, the top menu with our individual tasks. But we still have windows down below. We still have the task bar down below. So I call this hide all controls. You call it whatever you want. It's just not quite full screen. F10, and then F F11 is the next evolution of that. It takes us full screen for the application itself. So we lose the taskbar, we lose windows, and now we're just in a windowed view of Security Desk. If you had multiple monitors, this would open Security Desk across all of your monitors as well. Within this view, I can now hit F10 and it hides all those controls. So now this is like, a full screen display view. I don't have the area view. I don't have the controls, but maybe I'm, I have a public view monitor. I have a monitor that I really just want to show all of these cameras or this particular, uh, this particular set of views. We could do that by going into full screen with F11 and then using F10 to hide all those controls. So we could start stringing some of these concepts together. So naturally you're going to ask, what about F12? I couldn't figure out a, a purpose for F12. Again, if you can find a purpose for F12, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what I missed. So those are the function keys. Now, what about hotkeys? So if you look at the keyboard, there's a bunch of stuff that like is pretty obvious. Like a lot of people know that if let's say I pick, I don't know, this camera here and I hit backspace on the keyboard, it frees up the tile. That's something sort of natural, like you would think like logically that would work. But there's a ton of other stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So let's jump into some of these hotkeys and hopefully you could pick up a couple of these like little tips and tricks to make your operation more efficient. So at this point, I'm going to work my way from the left hand side of the keyboard over to the right hand side of the keyboard. Like we'll go in like the QWERTY order, so starting with Q and then work our way over. I could not find a uh, a function for any of like the number keys. Again, if you found a, a function for any of the number keys, let me know down in the comments below. But I'm gonna start with Q and W, which do actually do something. And it's something that I've started to actually incorporate into my demos and it cycles through the tile patterns. So it can change your tile patterns on the fly. So typically if I need to change a tile pattern, either I'm creating a predetermined layout here, um, which is already going to be pre-populated or I'm coming down here and I'm changing my tile pattern to be one of these. And maybe that's not so efficient for you. Maybe I just want to open up a few extra tiles. Well, I can hit Q or W in this case, I'll hit W and it opens up more tiles and I'll hit W again and it opens up more tiles and I'll hit W again and it opens up more tiles or now conversely, if I hit Q, you'll see it starts to shrink and shrink and shrink. So using Q and W can actually help you 
cycle through your tile view a lot faster. Again, to add more or reduce the number of tiles that you're looking at. Moving over to E. E expands your tile. So I had selected this tile. I hit E and it popped it up like taking up the full window. So rather than double clicking, which you certainly could still do, right? I could double click this and bring it up full screen or I can hit E and E toggles that. So it brings it up, blows up the tile and then shrinks the tile back. Here's another one that I've been incorporating into my demos and it, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of an odd one, but it's there. T and Y toggles through the selected tile. So you'll see here, I have tile number two selected because you could see the outline uh, of the tile in yellow. If I want to move forward or, or cycle through, I guess, in a clockwise direction, I would hit Y. Now watch what happens when I hit Y. It moves to the next tile and the next tile and the next tile, right? Ah, oh, see, I just learned something new. It doesn't quite go clockwise. It goes top to bottom. So I'm going to continue to hit Y and then it goes to tile number one. So, so logically it's, oh, I see it's cycling through the tiles in order of number. So if I hit T, it should go back to tile number one, which it just did. Y would go to tile number two three, four, five, which now is on the bottom left here, six, seven, eight. Again, if you're an operator, you're in a command center and you, instead of using your mouse, you wanted to use your keyboard, I could say, all right, well, I want to go to tile number two and blow that up. I did that all with the keys that we just learned. Uh, T and Y to cycle through and E to toggle full window or not. Here's an interesting one. Access control related, the U button. Access control, U, U for unlock. Select your door, so that's tile number two here. I have it selected, hit U, door manually unlocked. That's pretty, that's pretty helpful. Again, I can do that from here and just manually unlock the door using, uh, using the soft keys here, or shoot, why not? Use the U button to unlock. Moving over a key, I. I for instant replay. I just hit that button and it jumped me back 15 seconds. Again, you're in a command center. It's a it's a pretty intense environment. Somebody just, you know, flashed across your screen or a car just went by. Hey, what the heck was that? Hit I and it'll keep jumping back in 15 second segments. O apparently does nothing. I've tried. Again, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you find a reason for O. But P does something kind of interesting and I'd be curious to see uh, where you would use this because I, I don't quite understand the purpose. But if I hit P, P gets me into playback. So, uh, okay, it gets me into, into playback. It's not quite instant replay, right? So if we go to live here and I hit P, it jumps me back 30 seconds ago. Okay. Um, could be useful, I guess. Uh, maybe if I just wanted to go into a playback mode, I suppose. But you tell me, uh, if you're a security center operator and you could find a good reason to use P to enter into playback, you let me know. Now we're going to jump down a level. So we're no longer in the Q row. We are in the A row. And uh, really, by the way, P for me should mean pause but it doesn't, it's playback. G, on the other hand, is pause. Again, go figure that one out. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, the, be the best laid intentions, right? I'm sure as they're programming all these hotkeys, they're like, oh, P for playback. Well, what if we want to pause? Well, G, I guess. So if I hit G, it pauses the video. Again, could be useful to you. G for pause. Here's one that I really like. Uh, again, now jumping down another level. So we are now in the Z row of your keyboard. B. If I hit B on the keyboard, add a bookmark. Again, that's right here as well. If I just click that, that little icon, I can add a bookmark. But hey, again, it, it may just be easier. If your finger's already on the button, hit the B. Uh, I'm going to say Phil was here. And click OK. And it tells me who the, uh, what camera we're on, who's dropping the bookmark, what time, what the message was, click okay. 
and uh, momentarily we should see a bookmark drop on this timeline. So next two keys over from B, N and M. N is a frame by frame reverse and M is a frame by frame forward. So I've actually gotten us to a point in the video. I'm not gonna use my mouse. Look, I'm gonna hit E to bring up that uh, window full screen. And now I want to begin playing the video back. So I'm gonna hit play. And maybe I wanna see what's going on here. So they're, they're, raising, this, uh, they're raising this boom with, by the way, a generator attack hang, hanging off of that. I mean, I, I guess that's okay. Uh, but maybe I wanna uh, pause the video. I'm gonna hit G to pause the video. And now I wanna do a frame by frame reverse. I'm gonna hit the N and watch. There we go. I'm going frame by frame backwards just by hitting the N. And now maybe I wanna go forward. I'm hitting M and we're moving forward. N and M. N, frame by frame reverse. M, frame by frame forward. So that brings us to the next couple of keys over the comma and the period. Comma is fast reverse. Period is fast forward. So now if, instead of going frame by frame, maybe I wanna go fast reverse and fast forward. I'm just gonna hit the comma. And we could see I'm in a 1x reverse, 2x, 4x, 6x, 8x, and then 10x, I mean, it keeps going and going and going. Or I can hit period. Period will get me out of uh, my fast reverse. And if I hit period again, 2x forward, 4x forward, 6x forward, 8x forward, and so on and so on. So period and comma, fast forward, fast reverse. So that's about it for uh, for the regular like QWERTY section of the keyboard. But now if we move over to the number pad, there are a couple of keys here that are of interest. And those are uh, specifically the plus and minus buttons. So we all know if you want to do like a digital zoom, uh, I could take my mouse and use the, the jog wheel and zoom in. I'm just, you know, using my the jog wheel here and zooming in and zooming out. And I could take my, see, I have this little hand here. I could click and, and drag it around the screen. You see the red box is moving. I could also click and drag the red box and move that around. Or using the keyboard, I can hit the plus button and zoom in, minus to zoom out. And if I zoom in again, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move around. Again, you may find this to be helpful and maybe it's easier for you to use the mouse. Maybe you're one of those people that uses that weird like ball mouse thing and maybe it's not as easy to do from your mouse. So you do have an option on the keyboard, plus and minus, plus to zoom in, minus to zoom out, arrow keys to navigate around. So that about covers all of the hot keys and function buttons in Genetech Security Desk. Uh, maybe in a future video, we'll get into the config tool. Uh, let me know, is this useful to you? Do you think that you've picked up some extra operational capabilities by knowing what these buttons actually do? Do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Let me know. This has been another episode of the Inside Track. My name is Phil Coppola. I'm the regional sales manager for Genetech in the great state of New Jersey and board certified physical security professional. And we will see you on the next one.